rush hour at the World Trade Center subway station. This is one of 468 stations that transport a staggering 4.7 million people in and out of this city every day. Join me as we go behind closed doors and underground with the New York City subway system. The first thing you need to know about the New York subway, it's big. In fact, if its 722 miles of track were placed in a straight line, they would stretch all the way to Chicago. Its tunnels wind above, below, and through some of the world's most expensive real estate. It curves, it shrieks, but it keeps on rolling. For native New Yorkers, the subway is their lifeline. New York would be unlivable without the subway system. In this city of 8 million, few people have cars. That's because the best way to get across the city is to travel beneath it. The subway cost $1.50 for a one-way trip. And for the nearly 5 million people who use it on a daily basis, it's faster than buses, taxis, or cars. We view ourselves as the lifeblood of the city of New York. If the subway doesn't run, the city of New York doesn't work. Larry Reuter is the president of the MTA. He supervises all public transportation in New York City, including the subway. If you could slice Manhattan, the island of Manhattan, right down the middle, what would you see down underneath the streets? Oh, the city in Manhattan, it is the most complicated maze that you've ever imagined in your life. Between steam lines, heavy-duty electrical tension lines, sewer lines, water lines, then obviously the foundation of these huge skyscrapers kind of intermingled between all of that is our subway system. It's like a city underneath the city. And with 46,000 employees working down there and 4.7 million people, you can imagine, it's bigger than most cities every day. The New York subway system isn't one system. It's actually three. The first section, which snakes beneath Manhattan, was completed in 1904. Two others were later built, connecting Manhattan to the boroughs of Brooklyn, the Bronx, and Queens. Today, all three have been joined together and are run by the MTA, the Metropolitan Transit Authority. Daily users of the subway rush in and out of stations and on and off trains without even looking around them. That's because New Yorkers know the subway and its confusing maze of 22 different lines like the back of their hands. Going behind closed doors here gave me a unique opportunity to stop, look around, and ask questions. Often what I found was not what I had expected. First of all, we've all heard stories about homeless people living underground in subway tunnels. But crackdowns by NYPD transit police have moved them out. And as for crime, in the last 10 years, the crime rate in the subway has actually dropped by 70%. The person standing next to you on the train platform may well be an undercover police officer. Transit police in and out of uniform patrol the stations and the trains every day. And the barely audible voices you hear over the loudspeakers, you might think they're recordings, but they're not. They're generated by announcers at one of the subway's 75 regional control towers. Coney Island bound F train approaching York Street. Thank you for riding with MPA New York City Transit. And what about those musicians who serenade commuters for tips? I found out that they're only underground in the literal sense. They're actually licensed by the MTA. We don't want them too close to the edge of platforms, or creating crowding near platforms, and we also don't want them being so noisy, you know, that people can't hear the announcements. So those that abide by the rules, we actually encourage them, because people like that. They like a break in their day, but we want them to follow the rules so they don't cause us safety concerns as well. The MTA's biggest safety concern? A passenger falling onto the tracks and getting electrocuted. Although riding on two ordinary rails, the train gets its power through contact with a third rail, which carries 700 volts of electricity. Because there are no locomotives, subway trains require this constant source of energy to keep things moving. 
The subway never closes its doors, but in the early morning hours from midnight to 6 a.m. while the city above sleeps, the subway below becomes a beehive of activity. Every night, a small army of workers in iridescent safety vests tackle the never-ending job of replacing worn-out track. With the 75-ton trains riding the rails, the steel tracks wear out at an accelerated rate. Because this system is a subway, and we're underneath all of those water and sewer lines, a lot of water and sewer gets into our subway and ultimately rusts the rail, and that causes the, the rail to fatigue earlier than it should. Straight sections can last a year and a half, but sharp curves may have to be replaced every three months. The crews of 16 called gangs must work quickly between trains. When we see a train approaching, everybody gets in a safe position, safes up the tools themselves, and uh, we wait for the train to go through, and then we resume. Isn't that a little scary to look up and see a train coming? Well, you, you just always assume the train is coming. The day you don't assume a train's coming is when it's going to get you. The track sections weigh 1,300 pounds and must be lifted the old-fashioned way. All right, coming off. Together. Yep. In a matter of seconds, the new rail is in place, and the track is ready for the next train. Although many of the nearly 50,000 MTA employees work underground, headquarters is an above-ground office building in Brooklyn. Behind this closed door is the command center of the New York City subway system. Here, MTA officers work around the clock, coordinating the moves of more than 6,000 trains every day. The command center is surprisingly low-tech. Yeah, TSS Smith, come on to get Charles Smith. Supervisors here communicate with train operators and station workers using a closed circuit radio system and ordinary telephones. This place is where the decisions are made to figure out how to recover from any problems that occur on the system. Troubleshooting here includes everything from routing trains around stalled cars to dealing with derailments to fires in the tunnels. Attention all uh, uptown and downtown number two or five trains. With several million people underground at any given time, emergencies are an inevitable part of life in this city beneath the city, and planning for them is crucial. How do you prepare for a major catastrophe? We actually do a lot of drills every year on different types of emergencies, so we're prepared in all of those eventualities. Four times a year behind closed doors, the MTA stages emergency evacuation exercises Night scenario, a train fire. We're gonna get them off in a little bit. We got an emergency exit right up here. New York police and firemen take part in these very realistic simulations. Emergency workers must tend to the injured, while others get the passengers to safety. I don't like those, please. MTA office workers play the role of the angry commuters. The acting of the passengers may not be professional, but the rescue workers take their roles very seriously. They know that their work here will help them save lives if a real disaster should strike. When we come back, I find out what it takes to drive a subway train. All right, this is harder than it looks, okay? <laughs> Behind closed doors will continue in a moment here on a and &E. London continues here on a and &E. The New York subway's electric bill is $140 million a year. Not too surprising when you consider that daily travel is estimated at an amazing 1 million miles. That's the equivalent of a train circling the earth 46 times a day. Keeping the nearly 5 million daily riders on time and on track is a full-time job for the 6,000 men and women working the trains. It takes a minimum of two people to run a train, a conductor, and a driver. The conductors are in charge of opening and closing the doors, as well as making station announcements. And out street, transfer here for the A and the C train. But it is the operators who physically move the trains. 
I went behind closed doors with Shoshana Hall, who's been driving the E-Train for more than three years. How much do you actually control and how much is controlled by a computer? I control everything. You control everything? Everything. As far as speed and propulsion, there's no computerized uh, anything yet. In fact, Shoshana must apply constant pressure to the throttle by squeezing it or the train will stop. This is to prevent a crash in the unlikely event of an operator heart attack or stroke. The throttle's nickname, the dead man. Uh, this basically can go up to about 50 miles an hour. Do you actually go 50 miles an hour sometimes? No, not really, no. We have speed limits that we're supposed to adhere to. Really? Like that 30 miles an hour. Oh, I see. Maximum speed for the New York subway trains, 45 miles per hour. It just feels faster because of the noise and vibration. A major concern for drivers, overcrowding on the train platforms, especially during rush hour. See, like now that guy's stepping out over the line. Right. Now the line make me nervous. <laughs> well, if he was directly on the edge, it would make me nervous, and I would blow the horn to alert him oh. to step back. Okay, that's the procedure for us. Is the, is the horn loud? Extreme. So I guess we couldn't just blow it here? Sure. Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> Although previously a bus driver, Shoshana needed a new set of skills to drive a subway train. She had to pass a mandatory six-week course, which included classroom work and mastering the subway simulator. I got into the driver's seat for a trial run with instructor Charles DeFord. Oh, I am going. So Do I steer? The, the, you, the train is on the tracks. It steers itself. Okay. You just put apply power and brake. At a cost of a million dollars a piece, the MTA's two state-of-the-art simulators allow students to get up to speed without endangering the lives of paying customers. Can you get a ticket for going too fast on this uh, thing? Well, they do have, occasionally we have people out there with speed guns. And if you get caught going over the speed, uh, you do get in trouble. For drivers, operating the trains underground is relatively easy because it's a controlled environment. The trick is driving the trains above ground, where you might confront extreme weather conditions both day and night. But with the flick of a switch, the simulator enables students to practice driving through harsh winter snow and ice year round. This is harder than it seems. Is that a computer evaluated and graded my driving in the simulator? Okay. You went over the speed limit. You were speeding. Oh, really? Did I speed all these times? Yes, you did. Those are all my. I just got one, two, three, four, five. The five speed limit was 15, 15, and you went 25. That was a little too fast. 25 and a 15. Yeah. Ooh, okay. I spent a short time in the simulator, but student drivers must spend hours and achieve perfect scores before driving a real train. Uh, be advised, we have a visibility problem here on the line. Uh, signals are hard to see. Operate with extreme caution, restricted speed. While the MTA's operators move the trains, it's the job of another division entirely to keep them running. When you think of Coney Island, the first thing that comes to mind is the famous boardwalk. But just a mile away is where the MTA maintains the trains. I'm at the New York City Transit Complex in Coney Island. This 75-acre facility is one of 13 locations where subway trains are stored, repaired, and refurbished. At half a million square feet, this one complex is as large as Yankee Stadium. I was given a tour by General Superintendent Frank Seleccia. Almost everything that you work on here is too heavy for even a few men to pick up. Oh yeah, that's why we have 80, eight, over 80 overhead trains that would do all the lifting. Behind these closed doors, the MTA has gotten the art of fixing subway trains down to a science. The trains drive right into the building. Giant cranes then pick them up like toys to separate the passenger compartments from the wheel assemblies. We do two cars a day. We bring them in, we roll the truck frames in here, we completely disassemble them. All the components are sent to the various shops. We rebuild them, put it back together, and 
train goes out for another six years. To give me an appreciation for the specialized skills involved in maneuvering this heavy equipment, the MTA agreed to let me operate the overhead crane. The subway car that I would lift weighed more than 70,000 pounds and cost $1 million. So what do you physically do up there with that crane then? Well, it's almost like a video game. I pretty much uh, lift the trains, uh, you know, like you would play a video game, only it's the real thing with actually picking the trains up and put them in the location needed for the guys to work on them. To get to the crane's cramped cab, I had to climb four stories up a metal ladder. This might be a good time to uh, get a trial run. Sure. We have um, two joysticks. OK. This one here is our bridge. That moves okay. the whole operation. It moves the whole thing that way. Yes. This one gives us our up and down. That's OK. Good. And that's good. OK. And you ready to roll? All right. The last thing we want to do is stop. So go in it and keep going. Because if you stop, that starts you to swing. Let's go another speed. Oh, it starts you to swing. Right. That's not a good thing. Not a good thing. Come, tell me when I'm supposed to stop. OK, uh, let's go to the second speed. Go another turn. Faster? Yes. There oh. you go. And stay on it. Don't let it go. Oh, my god. All right. This go. is scary. <laughs> let it go. Let it go? Yeah. OK. I moved the crane into position over the car that I would be lifting. Tom stepped back into the driver's seat to hook us up. You're moving it? According to his signal right there. Yeah. So he has the view I don't, so from this point on, pretty much I have to go by his signals. I watched as he skillfully lowered the crane's hooks, which the ground crew below then attached to the car's body. Once everything was secure, I returned to the controls. A mere flip of the switch, and the train began to rise. Right. Aggressive, right up. Hold it all the way down. OK. Tell me when to stop. Oh, it's going to stop on its own. Oh, OK. There's an automatic limit switch that'll uh, stop the train. When wow, it comes right stop. up to us? Right up to us. In order to move the train car to the other side of the warehouse, we had to carry it over the top of a dozen others. If we dropped it, it would be a multi-million dollar disaster. Tell me when. Keep going, don't stop. Ringing a bell? Whenever heavy objects like entire train cars are being moved, crane operators must sound an alarm to warn workers below. Once the car was in position, I lowered it to the ground with the guidance of the crew below. That's it. Just stay with it. He's going to shoot his hands out like a uh, umpire at a baseball game. And that's when you let go. You have to look at him, not at anything else. I'm looking at him. All right. Good. All right. All those times my mother said those video games will amount to nothing. There you have it, right? Thank you. How'd you like it? Very cool. Okay. A little intimidating at first. Like anything for the first yeah. time, right? Coming up, have you ever held $20,000 cash in your hand? In a television first, the MTA shows me the money and the super secure room where they count $7 million worth of passenger fares every day. Behind Closed Doors will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Behind Closed Doors with Joan London continues here on a and &E. For New Yorkers, the subway is the great equalizer. I know a couple people that probably could afford to take a, a plane anywhere they want, and they still ride the subway. You know, it's just, you never know who you're going to run into. At rush hour, you're likely to see a Wall Street businessman in an Armani suit standing next to a student in a sweater and jeans. Subway's crucial. If I didn't take the subway, I'd have to deal with the bus. And uh, I think it would take me a lot longer to get to work every day. Since the mid-1980s, the number of people who use the New York subway has increased dramatically. And with record ridership comes record profits. So you're collecting millions of dollars every day. How do, you, how do you get it from all those places? We have what you've seen in the movie, the money train. 
Uh -huh. We actually have trains that run out into the subway system, collect the money from the station, bring them into special tracks and get money into the money room. So the money trains really do exist. The money trains really do exist. <laughs> Behind this closed door is what the New York City subway system calls the money room. Here, every day, the fares from the 4.7 million passengers are collected and counted. It has never before been seen on TV until now. So this is the double door this is system? This personnel trap. One door must be closed before the next door can be opened. Just like because they didn't want our program to compromise their security, the MTA agreed to show me the money with certain ground rules. We agreed not to film the money trains or reveal the location of the money room. Chief Revenue Officer Al Putra escorted me to a deep sub-basement where the money trains offload the cash. Each night, um, the money trains arrive at this location, leave from this location, and complete their cycle of collections. Until 24 hours later, and start and all do over it again. again. Armed guards deliver the money, which is kept inside these locked rolling bins. So these bins just keep rolling in? Hundreds of them. How many Hundreds bins does it take to hold $7 million? $7 million is about 35 bins. Then they're taken upstairs in heavily secured elevators. Once inside the money room, the bins are unlocked. Then the bags inside are removed, counted, and signed for. The bags are taken to the next room to be counted by a cashier. It can take an entire eight-hour shift for a cashier to count the contents of just one bin. Most of the actual counting is done by machine. There are absolutely no hand counts involved unless you, you receive mutilated money and can't go through the machine. The bills are placed in groups of a thousand and then sealed inside plastic bags called bricks. There you go. This is a brick of 20,000. Right. You got to look at this, okay? It's just a, a brick of 20s. This is $20,000. I think that's pretty amazing to most of us. I don't know. I don't think I've never held $20,000. Each day behind these closed doors, 500 cashiers, supervisors, and transporters handle $7 million, and most of it in $1 bills. Just how do you deal with security in here? Well, security is really a series of roadblocks or hurdles. They're steps that we take to convince the average person that if they were to attempt a theft, they wouldn't be successful. And that's basically how you keep honest people honest. You don't put them in a state of temptation. Individuals that count funds here work in pocketless jumpsuits. When they report to work, they deposit their valuables, their wallets, in small mailbox lockers. Now, those lockers are also in a high security area, so I watch their valuables as well. But it eliminates the debate over whose money is where. If there's any money in this room, it belongs to New York City Transit. The MTA has found that one of the most successful deterrents to theft is this, their own eye-in-the-sky system. Uh, we have in excess of 200 cameras in this facility, and uh, unfortunately, I'm like a, a little bit of the opinion, you can't have too many, you can only have too little. The cameras are wired to this control room. It wouldn't be possible for any one person or group of people to watch all these cameras. So the theory on this is that we record them, and in the event we have an issue, we have that data available, and we can refer back to it, and it's a very strong tool, a very strong return. Once the day's money is counted, it's taken to the bank. For this part of the trip, the MTA uses traditional armored cars. Probably have as many armored cars as some city has bus systems. With millions of New Yorkers dropping $1.50 at the turnstiles each time they get on the train, the MTA grosses a staggering $2.5 billion a year. What do you think would surprise people about what you do here? The ease at which it appears to function, but the difficulty that lies beneath the surface. It seems like everything just runs here. 
But in reality, nothing would run here without a hell of a lot of hard work. I found this to be true everywhere I went while behind closed doors in this city beneath the city. From the workers in the tunnels to the officers in the command center. From the operators who run the trains to the workers who man the cranes. It takes thousands of men and women who work below to keep the city up above moving.